Every so often, a deal comes along that you simply cannot refuse. This 1997 Haas HL1 CNC lathe was one of those deals. Take it out of my shop, and it's yours. Now how could I beat that? As a lifelong enjoyer of flea markets and free finds, I've learned something. Nothing is actually free. And this lathe is a really good example of that. Despite being in fantastic shape, being functional, I even saw this thing running, it needed a good deal of work. And that work started with, like most projects, with a lot of disassembly and cleaning. And boy, they really don't get much dirtier than that. This lathe has seen significant use in the production environment for over 25 years. Judging by the shop that it came from and the overall condition, I can tell that it hasn't ever really been abused, but like most production machines, it hasn't been kept in fantastic shape. As soon as I took off the back covers, the magnitude of what I was in for began to weigh on me. Every surface was covered in chips, every crevice jam-packed full of stainless pieces of metal just waiting to cut my fingers up. Water-soluble oil and the mist that comes with it covered everything. And after 30 years, combined with shop dust and just all sorts of grime, not a single surface was left untouched. Filth was quite simply immense. Not knowing quite where to start, I simply grabbed a rag, some simple green, and started wiping. Considering that the machine base and most of the exterior are white, it was very encouraging. With each wipe, I got to see a little glimpse of what this machine could be. At this point, I was excited, but I didn't know what lay ahead. I very much considered pulling this outside, grabbing my pressure washer, and just spraying everything down in the hopes of getting off the majority of the grease. I did, however, decide against this. I have a little vegetable garden, a lawn that I like to walk around on and mow, and I really didn't want to pollute my environment with all of this used oil and chips. So instead, I opted to go the route of wiping everything and using a classic two-bucket method of collecting all of my wastewater. I would later separate the oil from the water and send the waste oil for recycling as well as the wastewater. This is the safest way and most recycling centers in your area should be able to take whatever waste oil and water you have. Just look how filthy this is. I moved the tool carriage all the way to the other side, only to expose more chips, oil, and filth for me to clean. Pulling out these Brillo pads from all these corners is really satisfying. Each panel that came off needed to be cleaned both inside and out. It was very satisfying spraying these down with simple green, walking around for a little while, and coming back to find that all of the muck had just stripped down and was ready to be wiped off. Using a drill brush is something that I picked up during the Bridgeport rebuild, and it really does help break up all of this grime. Grease and chips stand no chance, and although there is a slight risk of scratching this surface, this epoxy machine paint is pretty durable, and quite frankly, I don't think a small scratch here and there is going to do much harm to this machine at this point. that I had to take multiple passes at each surface. First wiping away the majority of the grime, 
grease and chips, and then coming back later with a cleaner rag and wiping everything until it was white. After finishing that first panel, we get to do everything all over a second time with the matching identical panel that goes right next to the first. One downside to using the drill brush is that it does splatter dirt everywhere. Thankfully, this side of the machine hadn't been cleaned yet and I wasn't too fussed by having this side get all dirty since I'll be cleaning it later anyway. Booyah! Just when I thought I was getting a handle on the situation, I decided to take off the motor cover. I really wasn't prepared for what I would find in here. Over 20 years of this machine running and having belts wearing and flinging their rubber all over this cabinet combined with trim oil, chips, dirt, grease, hydraulic oil, you name it. And well, it was dirty. <laughs> I'm not talking about darkness. This is advanced darkness. This took probably a solid week and a half every day after work just coming in here scrubbing at another corner using a scraper simple green rags brushes ah, well I could rant forever but just take a look the hydraulic oil however was clean the machine was maintained just not really cleaned or wiped down at any point I almost couldn't believe that the motor was silver. I really thought that it was spray painted black when I started working on this. You can see here just how thick the grime is. I spent quite a while scraping at this. Although satisfying, it was awkward, painful, and made my hands cramp up after a while. But after lots of scraping and some wiping, this is where I was at. I was about halfway through, and I realized I wouldn't be getting this perfect, but there was still a lot more to be done. However, I need a little bit of a break from this section for now. I know, cleaning this outside panel should give me the dopamine hit I need to keep going. Ka-chow!
I decided to take off the roller cover and I couldn't believe this chip I found. I mean, just look at this thing. That's some real heft. The vacuum put in a lot of work doing all this. I found the door rollers were messed up. Those have to be replaced. Surely those can't be too expensive, right? And the top door roller wasn't much better. I mean, look how filthy this thing is. And look at all these chips. Sweet Jesus. Hey, look at that. Free rag. The vacuum mostly worked to suck up these stainless chips and grease, but really left a lot to be desired. It didn't take very long for the filter to start getting clogged up, and shaking it, cleaning it helped, but uh, it really isn't meant for doing this kind of work. I mean, just take a look at how messy this stuff is. I decided to scrub the inside of this track cover using some hand brush just to not fling dirt everywhere. The outside, on the other hand, was really caked on and I opted to use the drill brush again. Really can't get enough of this thing. Let's take a look at this door next. This window had been replaced at some point, albeit very poorly, and it was in bad shape. I took the nuts off, removed the old window, scraped off the old sealant, and then gave this thing a quick wipe down like everything else. I wanted to make sure the inside was especially clean before I applied a new window. But first, I 3D printed these plastic washers in order to not have the new window crack like the old. Using some clear silicone, I applied the new window, tightened everything down, and the result was simply fantastic. Here are the old door rollers in really poor shape. And after looking up the price of new ones from Haas and being quite frankly shocked at the price, I thought, hey, I could 3D print some of these rollers real quick and these should do the trick. Working hastily, I got everything together, got ready to put the door back on, and quickly realized that these had a fatal flaw. With even just a slight side load applied, the 3D printed section would pop off. Yeah, that's not gonna do. Thankfully, I was able to source some nice stainless steel replacements online, and it turns out that they're just standard patio door rollers, one and a quarter inch in diameter, nothing special. So after a second try, we got everything back together and we were ready to reinstall the door. It really does look so much better than before. Don't mind all these smudges. My hands are dirty when I was putting it back on. We got the door reinstalled. After a lot more cleaning off camera, I was able to get the inside of the motor cabinet fully done and was able to put the side panel back on. I cleaned the fan off camera, made these new connections for the fan, and got everything hooked back up. I also made sure to wrap these in electrical tape to avoid any shorts later on. It should work a lot better now. This front cover still needs cleaning. Let's get that done. And 
Now that's better. Inside and out. Order of operations is a little bit challenging on this and I did place it in, realized I had to remove that top cover again, and then, yeah. You know, you gotta backtrack sometimes, but it's all in a day's work. With the top door guide removed, I could easily get this panel back in place. Climb back on top and retighten the door slider. Here's a final look inside with everything clean. Really a huge difference. Don't mind the smudge marks, we'll get to those later. It's such a relief having this back together at this point. It's been a couple of months of work, on and off, and well, to have the door functioning and looking good really is nice. Overall, the machine turned out fantastic. Soon, we'll be able to power it up. It's been nearly six months since I started getting electricity in the barn, and well, we're just now getting it. As always, thanks for tuning in to Roken Motor Company, and we hope that you'll stick around for both our rotary phase converter build and the first startup of this Haas CNC lathe. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to get all of our future updates. And that's all for Roken Motor Company.